You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone. Welcome to an amazing show today. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. And this is episode number 542. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Hope you're having a great week. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you are having a good week. It's spring for most, but if you live in New York, sucks to suck. Ooh, bad weather out there, right? Yeah. I haven't paid that much attention, but I've heard it's cold. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's all about how you look at it. It's all perspective because I saw someone like whining and complaining that they were stuck in their house. If I was stuck in my house for a snow day, I'd be stoked. <laughs> I'd be so happy I didn't have to go to work and I would just be like, internet's off. Woo! <laughs> Turn it back on, go on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's true. I, it, it's just not something we're used to here, though, either. No, we're so definitely not. it doesn't happen out here. Maybe that's a positive for moving north to Colorado. I'm still trying to figure out where to move to. But um, anyway, guys, welcome. Welcome to another awesome show. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much for supporting us and leaving us those reviews. It helps other people find this information. And as you guys know, the more people that are educated and have been given the right information, the more freedom we have to fly and the more we can retain that freedom to fly. And today's show is going to be an emotional one. Hmm. So we're going to talk today about what happens when you're flying your drone and someone shows up with a chip on their shoulder. Mm. I'll tell you what Rob does. It's very simple. I will even give you the Amazon link. Oh boy. Rob just pulls out his taser gun and lights up a mother that's not actually uh, what yeah happens. no <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was nodding my head looking at the camera and then wait oh wait <laughs> isolate the problem <laughs> were a... you talking <laughs> <laughs> that's not actually how we handle it but why don't we go ahead and play that question because now everyone is wondering <laughs> what the question is all right here we go hey you guys my name is kyle stone um uh, asking this question out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. And um, my question is specifically about security. You know, um, what to do when you're going out on these jobs, in particular um, jobs such as um, drone base. I just signed up for that. And one of the things I'm worried about is going out to a location, you know, an unfamiliar location, especially in this political climate that we're in right now of all the turmoil that's going on. And not only that, but the public's um, perception or misconception of drones and how they're used. And just the way people look at, especially the Phantom, you know, I have a feeling a lot of people, as soon as they see that, they're automatically thinking that this person must be a pervert. He must be looking into my backyard or he's spying on me and all these other different things. And I just wanted to know, what do you guys do when you go out to an unfamiliar location or you're going out to shoot a house that's, you know, in a neighborhood and you have to deal with the neighbors or people who are curious about what you're doing? What do you say to them? And also what issues have you already run into? Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate everything you do. All right. So first of all, Kyle, thank you for the question. It is a good one. And I think it's something that everybody should be thinking about if they're not, although a lot of people are, if they're not thinking about it, they... they're definitely thinking about it because I know a lot of drone pilots go to these drone based jobs. They go to their first couple of jobs and sure. the nerves are running. What True. if someone comes out here and shoots my drone? What if this? What if that? Okay. First of all, first things well, first, <laughs> first things goes, first, Paul. go for it. Um, no, I'm I just attitude is so important. That's what I wrote down. I was writing down some notes of like, Cordial, respectful, understanding, all those kinds of things. Well, people can't freak out at you if you're not freaking out at them. I mean, like they can try, but if you're sitting there calm, they begin to look crazy. And then the attention uh, begins to shift on them when other people are looking. So, in other words, don't take the bait. Yeah, right? don't take the bait. Don't it's take hard. the bait. It's hard. Also, go out there with confidence and conviction. You're there serving a purpose. Um, you know, recently when someone asked this question and Vic Moss, one of our instructors, had put together a list of documents he actually takes out with him to all the jobs. Because if people have questions, he can just pull out the documentation, even to local enforcement officers, and say, look, I have every right to be here. 
a sampling of that would be maybe not list everything, but what are a couple of things that are in that packet? Well, good news. Um, two pieces of good news. Number one, if you're a DroneU member, this is all coming out in a DroneU PDF. We're calling it the DroneU Field Kit. So all of these documents, which I'm not going to name them all, there's over 20 of them, uh, will be created together. You will have a, you can essentially take a copy, photocopy of your license and registration to make the second page of this field kit. Mm -hmm. But this way you can take this out and you will have everything that you need to back yourself up. Including the laws and those kinds of things. And one of those things is the photographer's right. In fact, a lawyer um, put this out and I absolutely love it. And it says, uh, number one, the general rule. The general rule in the United States is that anyone may take photographs of whatever they want when they are in a public place or places where they have permission to take photographs. Absent a specific legal prohibition, such as a statute or ordinance, you are legally entitled to take photographs. Examples of places that are traditionally considered public are streets, sidewalks, and public parks. Property owners may legally prohibit photography on their premises, but have no right to prohibit others from photographing their property from other locations. That's in, And I would guess that a large percentage of property owners would not think that's the case. Agreed. Which speaks to your preparation going in with the right attitude. So, for example, if you've got this packet and so you're feeling armed, like, I'm ready. I dare them to come tell me I can't be here. That's the wrong attitude. Mm -hmm. Have the packet and be ready, but understand that you're going to have to educate people. And people don't know what you know. Very true. So you need to be prepared for that and use it as a tool and as a resource to help people understand, but not as something to throw in their face. Totally true. And if someone does approach you when you're out flying, it's so important to just stay calm and say, look, I'll answer all of your questions. I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing when I land the drone. So if you can just sit tight, look, I will totally help you out no matter what. Um, you know, it's funny too, because I know myself, I've had this happen and other pilots have had this happen. And someone comes up and they say, you're not supposed to do this. I'm calling the cops. And you know what I say? Call the cops. Call them because you're quickly going to realize that you're wasting their time. Well, and yeah, and even the way you answer that question, or the, that wasn't a question, the way you respond to that statement can be calm. It can be, I understand that you feel like you need to do that. That's all you have to say. You don't have to bait them with just wait till you find out that it, that it was a waste of your time or whatever no, you're no, going to you say. No, no, you just have to be very succinct and say, and no, frankly, I, I invite you to call the police. I think you'll quickly learn that not only are you in the wrong, but you're, you're wasting their time. And there are very big problems and issues and people's lives need to be saved. So not only are you wasting their time, but now you could potentially be taking his time away from saving a life. How is that going to make you See, feel? And by the way, you're seeing a couple of different strategies about how to go about this. <laughs> and I could actually see some merit to what you're saying in the sense that you might talk them out of it and not waste the police officer's time. Oh, I really don't care if they call the police either way. Because no, I, I, I understand you don't. But at the same time, if you can avoid the police coming out, all the better, right? I mean, yes, it's, it, but, you'd rather them okay, not come. But for most of you flying, if you're doing a drone-based job, chances are it's going to be one battery to do the entire drone-based job. And second of all, if you... If you pack up quickly, if you do your drone-based job... <laughs> you're in and out of there. You're in and out of there before any police is ever getting there. I'm sorry, but it's so true. Like, and then they show up at your door because someone... But that's... <laughs> no, how are they going to find out who you are? Well, no, if someone get your license plate number or something. I, I mean, it could happen. It's probably unlikely. We've not heard any of those kinds of stories, but... The, only, the worst story that we've seen so it, like so far is some guy got attacked on the beach. And mm. uh, so I've had a crazy lady come up to me... And so vain, so vain, girl, you vain. <laughs> anyway, and you wish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't know where she was going with this one, but uh, we were in Newport Beach and we were flying, and the lady was like, "Are you taking pictures of the beach?" And I was like, "I sure am." And she was like, "You know how I am. I'm a little blunt." Um, <laughs> so do as we say, not, not as, as Paul we do. Does. <laughs> I'll say we just to just Paul hang with just you. one guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was like, you know what, though? Do you see the sunset, the way it's kind of striking the horizon line and making that nice red color? Isn't that gorgeous? That's what I'm trying to capture. And then she was like, oh, well, I was just worried. And I'm like, well, worried that there's a beautiful sunset? And she's like, uh, uh, just that you were taking pictures of me on the beach. And I'm just like, do you see my screen? You look like a dot on the beach. 
They're oh, just one dot, yeah. not three, just one. <laughs> and not a particularly attractive dot. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I know you didn't. And didn't nor should you. Nor I, should you. I mean, like, dude, we could make some really funny YouTube videos on this. Like, how to respond to an angry person that doesn't like the fact that you're flying your drone. Step one, confrontation. <laughs> oh, gosh. So this would be a right way and a wrong way video? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> and then the lady, lady comes up and you just take a propeller and you slap her across oh, the gosh. face and you no, say, shut yeah. up. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. But anyway, we could come up with some really... Uh, that could be fun. It, it could, we could make some funny YouTube videos. I mean, it just reminds me of the guy who throws gasoline on everything. Like, yeah. oh, I need to barbecue some chicken, throw it over here, throw it on the grill and some gas and it's done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, whoa. <laughs> uh, and by the way, that person who says they're going to call the police... If they're going to go call the police, they're going to have to dial the number. They're going to have to wait for them to answer. So really, it just kind of gets them out of your hair. So and let will, them call. Yeah. And by the way, I've had the cops called on me at least five times. And the last time was in San Diego. And the police officer said, sir, you have no right to fly here, blah, 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 blah. You're supposed to be five miles away from an airport. And I looked the lady square in the eye. I said, ma'am, can you read an aircraft sectional map? And she responded to me. No. I said, well, then how do you know exactly where I can and can't fly? Because if you can't give me the legal verification for the statement that you just made, it is null and void and I will not follow your authority because you have none. <laughs> Again. <laughs> it worked, Rob. I don't know what to tell you. It worked because it's like right. you're saying in a nice way. Look, you don't want to know how I really want to say this to this lady. Okay. I'm sure like uh, some guys are probably nice being like. Nice is a relative term, but go ahead. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to be like, I wanted to be like, oh, no, you didn't, girl. No, you didn't. All right, let me pull this sectional out, and then you're going to teach me how to read it and explain to me why you think we can't be within five miles of an airport. And if you can't do that, I want you to sign my map because I'm going to post it on YouTube about how you told me you, I can't fly here, yet you don't have the authority to tell me that, and you couldn't read the sectional map to actually know where I can and can't fly. That's what I wanted to say to her. Yeah. But... Public, em down public embarrassment doesn't help with any situation and going about it the Rob way is definitely the right way um, because in fact we were there with Xavier and Xavier was actually like he's he's actually correct uh, he, he actually is a guest on one of the biggest podcasts about drones in the country and he knows this stuff inside and out and then pulled out the sectional map and showed her oh, nice. and then she was like oh well okay guys well it was funny her tone went from like bitchy authoritative cop to understanding compassionate empathetic well good uh, and you know kudos to her for having the ability to yeah. change that attitude because pride can often just uh, totally and and you know guys i'm i'm really just you know i'm joking about how to go about these situations for for just comical relief because and we just had the New Mexico State Police in here talking about we were talking about drone stuff and then i was joking about you know getting pulled over by state police and getting a ticket and he goes, well, Paul, one thing that you did right is attitude. Whenever you're Absolutely. talking to an LEO, whenever you're talking to someone like that, attitude is so important. If you want to make friends with police, never be confrontational ever, mm -hmm. because even if you're in the right, it's human nature to just like be defensive. Well, sure, and, and particularly the, in being in their position. Oh yeah, and I feel bad for a lot of police officers. In fact, there is a, a police officer who called into the show from Chicago who wants to come in, uh, come on the show to talk about how to talk to Elios. We've got to get him on. And I'm all about it. I just. I get pressured about 80 things from you and Tim per day, and I'm all about it. It is not going to the top of the priority list, though, <laughs> for all the oh, things God. that we're doing. <laughs> this is how this uh, relationship normally works with uh, Rob and I. <laughs> <laughs> it's a love love. Yes. Anyways. Um, but anyway, going back to this, um, step one, don't be confrontational when someone is concerned that you are breaking their privacy. Step two, let them know that you'll answer their questions and their concerns as soon as you land. If they're very aggressive, land right away, pull out this field kit. By the way, I'm going to make this available to non-members. Um, in fact, Tim is working on that right now. It's not available just yet. But you'll we'll put it on this page. You can give your email and you will get this field kit and you can customize it yourself. Just the first two pages are customizable. Um, but you'll have 
also in here, which I think David Boggs would find very useful, is the U.S. Uh, the U.S. Federal Code, Title 18, Part 1, Chapter 2, Section 32, which very clearly discusses that shooting an aircraft is actually a federal crime. Mm -hmm. So if someone says, I'm going to shoot your drone down, my response is, do it because then I'm going to own your life after this in federal court, just like how David Boggs is owning the drone slayer in federal court right now. Yeah. So. That would be one thing you could say. That's true. Yeah. Is it the right thing to say, though? No. Or you could simply say, well, just so you know, sir, that's against the law, and I have the documentation to show you, if you're interested. Sir, Different I would just to like to about. educate you that if you do shoot the drone, it is 20 years in federal prison and a $10,000 fine. I've got the paperwork right here to show that to you if you don't believe that it is a federal law. If you'd like to read it, though, I can give you some reading glasses, sir. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You always got to get that little jab. Oh, he's got to go for the at little least, kick. At least a little he's something. Got to turn that knife a little bit. Little shank. Little shank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just hate ignorant people, and I think a lot of other people can empathize with me there. So, Indeed. And that's why I think having the officer on the show talking about how to talk to LEOs is going to help everyone out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you uncomfortable yet, Rob? No, no, okay. I'm not. This is fun. And, <laughs> I think it's and, fun too. And I too. hope it's helpful. I really do, Kyle. I hope it's giving you what you need and it's answering your question. Um, there's not a magic formula. The reality is you're going to deal with people that are just uncomfortable with what you're doing and but you just how, have to be prepared for that. Exactly. And how you handle it, how you respond is going to control the situation. Um, a lot of people don't believe that you can control other people's responses by how you talk. There's books and books and books on it in psychology. I recommend you read them because you, you can truly control the outcome of situations by how you handle them. Yeah, um, and, and starting with a simple word of respect. I, I would start there. And in fact, Chris Voss, Chris Voss used to be one of the um, one of the master negotiators for the FBI. And he hostage negotiator. Hostage right? negotiator, yeah. yeah. And he would always talk about in order to get respect, you have to give it because in hostage negotiation, these people think of themselves as commodities traders, that, that people or hostages are just commodities traders. And as soon as you try to meet them on their level, they instantly break down that wall of aggression and anger and you're actually able to communicate with them mm -hmm. and you're actually able to have a conversation with them. Um, and I forget exactly the line that he said uh, in his book about – his book is Splitting the Difference um, – in his book about uh, exa what was the word he says? You you get respect um, because you are given respect because you are deserving of respect. I think mm. is what he says. Yeah, I don't know exactly the you you're the given respect phrase. because you're deserving of respect. I don't know. I'm gonna have to play it. It's a two way street, is basically what he's saying. But I didn't read the book, but I listened to his interview with James Altucher on the on his podcast. Great, great, one. and it was a great interview. You guys should check that out. It's a good way to get a sort of a synopsis of his philosophy and the way he works in terms of what Paul's talking about here. But one of the things that really struck me is as he was describing the different scenarios that he was a part of in negotiating for hostages and so forth is. It was always about respect and it was always very calm. Mm -hmm. And and it was also about emotional triggers too. It was about emotional triggers. Which is why I was joking about the glasses thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, but understanding when to trip them and... When not to. And you're not escalating. It, it's really fascinating and it is very effective in dealing with these confrontations that if you do this enough, you're going to have. Exactly. You need to be prepared for them. Mm -hmm. And what, yeah, he talks, he does such a eloquent job of explaining negotiating. Yeah. Um, yeah and he's, he's an impressive dude. It's important because you can compare it to business negotiations, but you can also compare it to these interactions that you may have with ang angry people in this political environment. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, people want their fears calmed. They don't want to be fearful. Right. And if you can be that, if you can be calm and be responsive and be respectful. And uh, if someone comes up yelling and angry at you, sir, I understand you may have some fears and you may have some concerns, and I totally understand that. But in order for the safest outcome of this situation right now, please let me land and let's discuss this. Right. Boom. Yeah, and just think you could be winning, I mean, one person at a time. It's helping the industry. Yep, and if they don't respond to that, then you slap them and say, Rick Tate! <laughs> 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 On that note, Kyle, thank you for the question. We do appreciate it. And guys, if you have a question, 
and you want a crazy answer, go to askdroneu.com. Get them in <laughs> as we as we love to say. If you're thinking the question, a lot of other people are as well. Be the one that gets it in and gets it answered for everybody. Yeah, and I just want to say shout out to Kyle for Nova, living in Northern Virginia. And I had to do the Rick James because Dave Chappelle is from Northern Virginia, D.C. area too. Went to cool. Duke Ellington. So well, anyway. you scared me, but I'm okay now. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, that's going to do it for us today. Don't forget to leave a review. Don't don't forget to share the podcast. This could help with some interaction and it could save a life. So please let your friends and parents know about the show. Yeah, why not? My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. <laughs>